I think we all understand in the modern world that we shouldn't go out of our way to unnecessarily cause offence to anybody. Uh, but we should also be able to speak freely. And one of the places where you should, I would have thought, be able to speak freely is if you're undergoing diversity training or, more specifically, race training and having a free ranging discussion of what is and what is not acceptable and how you might deal with it. Well, Carl borg -Neil, uh, was a former design authority manager at Lloyds Bank and he'd been there a number of years and he was a senior manager and he had to participate in an online training session, session entitled Race Education for Line Managers. But it all went horribly, horribly wrong and Carl Borg Neil joins me. Thank you, Nigel. Now, I don't know whether you needed to be educated in, you know, what you can and can't say. Um, perhaps you did, I don't know. Or, whether, or maybe this was completely over the top. Um, but I guess you went into it thinking, I'll participate. And it all, it seemed to go wrong when, and this is the account that I've got, uh, and, and you are dyslexic, and you accept that that can sometimes cause you to be clumsy. But I don't think you were in this case. When it comes to rap music, you asked a question as a line manager, how would you handle a situation where somebody from an ethnic minority used a word that might be considered offensive if used by a white person? And this was the end. We're not, we're not going to use it, but it's the N word. And the point you were making, I think, is that in rap music, this word is quite commonly used. It's used by some as a self-descriptor. So you were asking this as a question. Yeah, so it was a very simple question, um, as you pointed out. Um, but I asked the question um, without using the N-word. Um, OK. The trainer didn't seem to understand my question. Um, and one of the things I've done with, in terms of my dyslexia is that I've... Um, developed some techniques to try and sort of mask it and help out. Those techniques vary from um, rephrasing the question or giving an example. Well, in this case, um, the obvious thing was to give an example. Mm -hmm. um, and the dyslexia, my, my brain, um, I'm, I'm told by people that have tested me, I'm very intelligent. <laughs> um, I, I don't really know how intelligent I really am. <laughs> but apparently the intelligent part of my brain... Yeah. Um, Wanted, would have wanted to get the, the example out and would have forced it through my processor, which is slow. Mm -hmm. This is a problem with dyslexic people. They're often very intelligent, but they have a slow processor in terms of communication and writing. Um, it forced it out and out came the full N-word word. as an example. Yeah. Um, and after, that was which, it, really. after which, the trainer claimed she was not only offended by your use of the word, but she was too sick to work and took five days off. Yeah, I found this out much later on, um, that the trainer um, had apparently had to take five days off work. Um, I did on several occasions ask for sort of details of, of her sickness and what support she got, but I never got anything back. No. Um, and I just had to accept it. I did offer to give her a... a a face-to-face -face apology or a full written apology. Mm. Um, and I did actually apologise in the, in the session um, for having upset her. Um, but um, that was, that no, was never and, done. You know, that was it. That was the end. You fought a lengthy legal action. You've secured a bit of a victory. But I just wonder about all of this. Well, I'm joined down the line by Alison Malloch, Director of Equality and Diversity UK. And, Alison, you've heard that case, and, and I... You know, I have no reason to think that Carl isn't telling us the 100% truth, and, and that's perhaps backed up by the award that the court has given him. Uh, where are we going wrong with all of this? I think it's, it's really down to the trainer. And when we do our training sessions at Equality Diversity UK, we have a safe space contract. And safe space contract talks about um, listening to learn, to understand, to empathise, and not to minimise people's experiences. But we also give um, inclusive nudges. So we say that there may be some language that is um, unofficially out there that's okay, but in a professional environment, it's not. And we may use some of those terms ourselves um, in a way that 
people can understand what they are and what they shouldn't be saying. Um, and therefore, we say, you know, if somebody does upset uh, someone or traumatise them by using inappropriate language, the way that we have to manage it is to say, when you said that, it made me feel this way. And to have that dialogue and that discussion, that's part of the safe space. Do you think someone like Carl, you know, as an experienced bank manager, did he really need to do race education? I think that um, we all do. I think that um, if you don't mix in those communities and you don't know those those groups, um, it's important to know about cultural diversity, the sorts of things that people um, wouldn't know necessarily. So yes, even myself, I've I've learned a lot. I did a lot in the uh, the lockdown in terms of race because my background isn't how I look. So it's really important that we think through um, mm. what is appropriate and what's not appropriate. And also, over years, things change. So language that was OK many, many decades ago are not, it's not OK now. No, I get that. I get that. Things have always changed. I just, I just wonder with this whole race debate, Alison, whether what we might do is just treat everybody as equal regardless of skin colour, regardless of culture, and yeah. be fair to everybody. That's my thought. It would, Alison, great, uh, it would be great, Nigel, if that's what happened. But um, at the end of the day, we have this thing called imprint. And if we grow up in a household that is racist, sexist, homophobic, all of those things, that's what we take with us into the workplace. And we may use language at home. Um, and I'll give you a classic example. There was a woman on the train the other day who was using really offensive language uh, to her child. And it was the F word. And mm. you couldn't believe that this child was two or three and she was using this language. And I was one of the only people that had been given the child, child sweets and talking to her. And I said to well, her, why are you using that language? And she said, I grew up with that. Um, <laughs> well, I, and, well, I'll say, I'll have to say, well done you. If I was on that train, I'd have wanted you to do that. So, Alison, thank you for joining me. Quick thought of what Alison had to say, um, Carl. To be honest, I, I think I agree with quite a lot of it. I think... So she put it down to the trainer? I think um, definitely a lot of people have said the trainer overreacted. Yeah. Um, and in fact, there were some comments by members of staff made anonym, non, anonymously excuse mm. me, um, through um, the staff feedback that she did act inappropriately. Yeah. Um, and I think some of that's in the thing. Well, you know what, five, five days off sick because of what you... And you weren't using it in a literal sense as an example. Carl, thank you for coming on and sharing your story.